Welcome to Upper Lafayette on the Move. I'm Jan Swift. One of the most rewarding things about doing this show is getting to know local business leaders in our community. We're very honored to have as our guest today Lee Venable, my friend and owner of uh, Cajun Palms RV Resort. Lee. Hi, Jan. Thanks for being Thank me. you so much for being on this show. Pleasure to be here. I met Lee uh, several years back. We met through legal work when you were um, buying rental homes and yes. had just gotten into the um, RV resort work. And uh, I thought it'd be great to have you on the show today so that you can talk about your background as a Northside High graduate and talk about what led you to, to get into the business you were in and then transition into the um, the resort that you now have that's a magnet for hundreds of people, hundreds of families every week. But Lee, if you can tell us about where you grew up and where well, you went uh, to school. Well, I'm originally from Lafayette mm -hmm. and uh, uh, went to graduate from Northside High School in uh, 1976. Uh -huh. And uh, after I graduated from Northside uh, at midterm, I set out a year and attended uh, USL. Uh, I was fortunate enough to play football for four years. Enjoyed that career there. What position did you play? I was a uh, I was classified a linebacker, and I was also a deep snap center mm -hmm. for the Cajuns. Uh, Those must have been great. I had some days. good times. Uh, yeah. Uh, got a snap for uh, John Rivera, who went on to play in the pros for quite a few years. And so the, um, it was very fun. Uh -huh. I enjoyed it. Who were your coaches? Then? Coach Tamborello was my coach for the first three years. And then uh, my fourth year, my senior year, uh, Sam Robinson came back yeah. to coach at the university. That's a great guy. He sure is. Yeah. You had told me before we started filming that your father had passed away and you were helping your mother after, um, yeah, after uh, high uh, school. Unfortunately, my father passed away my senior year in high school. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I had enough credits to graduate in midterm, so I did, yeah. and went off to work and helped my, my mom mm -hmm. for about a year and uh, decided to walk on and uh, earn a scholarship mm -hmm. to play ball at USL, which I'm kind of glad I did. I had a great oh, yeah. time, you know. We didn't have the same pressures then. I, we're the same age, and you know, we went to college, but there wasn't that same pressure to jump into things right after high school that the kids have today. Right. Right, so, I agree. Yeah. yeah. What uh, field did you major in? At I was an industrial arts education major. Uh, I did not. I decided not to teach, and uh, after graduating, I decided to go into carpenter work, mm -hmm. and uh, I opened up a construction company. You had learned some of the crafts in in college. Learned some of the crafts in college. Uh, working for my father at a young age in, in the construction business also and uh, learning through college mm -hmm. uh, and put those tools together and decided to eventually open up my own business and uh, never look back. It's uh -huh. been a, it was a good ride. Were you a licensed um, contractor? Yes, yes, we were a licensed contractor in the Lafayette area. So what did you do? Like, how did you start out? Do you remember your first home? Uh, my first job was actually a, a large pecan tree that fell on a gentleman's <laughs> oh, roof no. during a storm and we uh, we got the job to remodel it and mm -hmm. uh, repair it. Was it a friend or did you just have your name out there? I had my name out there, but uh, it was an acquaintance. Uh, uh -huh. uh, it was a Mr. Johnson. Uh, his son was also a, a football player at USL, Barry Johnson. And I knew Barry through Turlings and because Turlings and Northside were right. kind of close. Right. So I knew of Barry and uh, Mr. Johnson gave him the job and... Uh, he trusted you? He trusted me, yes ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yep. So from there, you started building homes? From there, it took off, and uh, my name got out, and uh -huh. I did homes, and I did remodel work for everyone, and uh, it worked out well. It, was, it, was, it, it fed the family and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, supported the family and right. the kids and put them through school, and it was a good ride. Did you ever consider working for someone else, or did you always want to work for yourself? Well, when I first, first got out of high school, I worked for a couple people. Uh, you know, until I figured out what exactly I was going to do, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so after that, I realized that working for myself might be the way to go. You know, if I could get lucky yeah. and uh, do a good job for people, you know, I might get callbacks and referrals. So, right. and that's basically what happened. You know, you would tell me as a young boy that you would you worked and you ended yeah, up being yeah. that's uh, an a entrepreneur. That's a funny story. That's a funny story. We. Uh, we, uh, at 10 years old, I was a shine boy. I shined mm -hmm. shoes in a barber shop. And, um, Where was it? This was on the north side of town. Uh, it was called Henry's Barber Shop, uh -huh. about two blocks from Northside High. And uh, we, uh, I would shine shoes every day till 6 o'clock when I get off of school, elementary school. And 
uh, after I'd get off of school, I'd go run home, grab my lawnmower, and go cut one or two yards, you know, during daylight saving time. So, but I got so many yards, <laughs> I've accumulated so many yards that uh, I had to call in my friends and start subbing out my yards and let them cut them uh -huh. and pay them a percentage of the yards. So you got to keep a commission. So I kept that, a commission yeah. on each yard, yes So you were marketing and organizing <laughs> your workers. Exactly. I had subcontractors, they were cutting grass. Isn't that funny how you can look back and see traits that you needed as, you know, in the job you have now and the career that you've built for yourself. Sure. But um, yep. I never would have done that, I don't think. <laughs> it's really cool. I was yeah, glad you shared that with it me. It worked out well. Yeah. So by the time I met you, uh, I was an attorney and, and we ended up, you know, meeting each other uh, when you were buying rental homes. You transitioned from the construction work to amassing quite an inventory of rental homes. Yes, uh, over the years I would buy rentals, mm -hmm. old houses, apartments, fourplexes, and fix them up uh -huh. and rent them. A lot of my peers were doing that at the same time, but they would fix them up and sell them. And I, I saw a vision where if you you kept them and rented them mm -hmm. uh, and get them paid off, you, it'd be lucrative in the end, and which it was, you know, I made um, a good living with my rentals. What was your, your uh, you had told me before that there was a certain number that you needed to own to make it really profitable. I felt after you got your 10th rental property, mm -hmm. uh, you should turn the curve and it should start uh, being a benefit. To, to where, where it's profitable right. for you. Now you right. had a few more than 10. Yes ma'am, I ended up with uh, 326 mm -hmm. rentals. I remember when I met you, I thought, this is incredible. Yeah. Because I knew some people that had a few rental homes, but not not 10, and not, <laughs> not anything near yeah. what you had. But was it a lot to keep up? Did you have a big staff to make sure well, taxes were paid? And uh, Actually, when you get that many, um, uh, it's, it's a lot easier mm -hmm. because you hire, you help, you know, the help that you need to run mm -hmm. everything. I had a uh, secretary, I had a rental agent. Uh, my daughter was involved yeah. uh, for a long time. And uh, so it became a lot easier. Mm -hmm. It gave me more flexibility to do what I wanted to do. Uh -huh. And eventually, uh, which led to uh, breaking away from construction, because I had all the rentals, and it gave me an opportunity to decide if I wanted to do anything from there or just keep my rentals. And I decided that's when I decided to go ahead and, and build uh, Cajun Palms RV uh -huh. Resort. That's so cool. So before we move into that, all your homes were in this area. They were basically in Lafayette, Paris. Just about around. everyone was in Lafayette. So you could keep your thumb. Yeah. 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 Keep your uh, eye on. I things. felt if you kept them close, you could oversee them a lot better and mm -hmm. maintain them a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So when you when you were ready to build the RV resort, let's talk about how you came to that um, realization that you wanted to do that because that was really a big risk. It was a big risk. Uh, I went to the bank and they said absolutely not, you know, uh -huh. at first, and I had to do a little convincing, but. Uh, I saw the vision. I, I thought it'd be a, a neat thing. Uh, it's like Field of Dreams. Kind of. I mean, like it, Field there wasn't anything like yeah, that. If you look here. back, yeah, uh -huh. uh, uh, it's something that no one had ever done in this area to that magnitude, to that style. I guess I took a, a tropical theme uh -huh. and brought it to South Louisiana and mixed it in with the oaks and cypress trees that we already have here. So and just so people know, your your property that you ended up buying is in. Henderson. It, it's, it's right off of I-10. Right. At the yeah, Henderson just north of the exit. interstate uh, in Henderson. Mm -hmm. And um, were you a traveler? Did you have an RV where you would travel? And you know, I, I had purchased an RV, and we were doing some traveling, and uh, we went to a lot of different campgrounds, saw uh -huh. things I liked, saw things I didn't like, and uh, said, if I ever have the opportunity to do this, I might change it up a little bit. And uh -huh. that's basically what I did. I so built, you really enjoyed it. You enjoyed traveling sure, in your RV. Sure. Yes. And so you wanted to have your own place. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and um, you know, it's it, it's been a good ride. Uh, mm -hmm. You know. Well, I went out uh, there last Friday, and for people that haven't been to Cajun Palms, I mean, you've got a huge tract of land. You've got about 200 acres. Yes. That you can build on. I know you you don't have all of it covered with improvements, but right. just the front section. Yeah, is, uh, Cajun uh, Palms right now huge. sits on 40 acres. Mm -hmm. We're getting ready to add our third development, which mm -hmm. is going to be really neat. Uh, we're, right now we're at 338 sites, and when the addition comes in, we'll be up to 500 sites. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing another 40 more cabins, which has been a, a need for a while. A well, cabin. I don't have an RV, and I was thinking it'd be fun. Uh, right. To go spend the weekend, but you do have you yes. have 25 cabins we have right 25 now. 25 now, and we'll do another 40. So 65 uh -huh. cabins, 
We'll give 65 families an opportunity to come mm -hmm. and enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do some more swimming area. So. Yeah. It's going to be a nice addition. It's really well beautiful. Needed. And uh, when I drove up, I mean, this is probably slow er season. It's not slow by any yes, means. Yes, this is our slowest period winter, right now. We're getting ready yeah. to go into our busy season. Uh -huh. And then when school lets out, it becomes uh, chaos. You know, it's yeah. full blown then. Well, but, I asked Amanda, your assistant, you know, when mm -hmm. is a good time to come? And she said, you really have to book ahead because they're a waiting list yeah. every weekend for yeah. hundreds For example, of like I said, we only have 25 cabins right now, and those cabins are booked every weekend for the whole summer mm -hmm. since January. Mm -hmm. So they're already booked for the whole summer every weekend. So if you want to go during the week, let's say you're, um, you've are you got some time off or the, the kids have in service or whatever. It's the week, best time to go. Week is the best time best to go. Best time. It's not as crowded. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, it's availability. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a good time to go during the week. There's a pretty lake. I we have a couple of fish lakes the, to fish. Um, lake we song. have three nice swimming pools. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of entertainment. Uh, if you check our yearly calendar, we bring in bands, Cajun bands that come in from everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, we have different types of cook-off. We have a jambalaya cook-off, a crackling and boudin cook-off. <laughs> we have a gumbo cook-off. Uh, Matter of fact, this week we're having a jambalaya cook-off as well as a arts and craft show, which oh. is a big thing. It's Where are they coming from? You know, they come from different areas all over the area, all over the parishes. Local parishes come in and set up booths, and it's a pretty neat deal. We tried it a couple years ago, and it was a big hit, mm -hmm. so we continue to do it. By the tiki bar or underneath the big... Everywhere. Uh, like There's so many booth setups all around the pools, uh -huh. uh, our, our huge reception hall in the lobby, behind the clubhouse, everywhere. You can walk. There's a boot set up. And that's this? Uh, this coming Saturday. Oh, gosh. We're yeah. filming this on March, uh, what's today, the 13th, Monday, March 13th. Right. But, uh, wow. Yes. Gosh. It's going to be a neat deal. And then to throw in that, you got the jambalaya cook-off. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not sure how many teams have, have qualified or registered yet, but uh, I'm sure it'll be close to 20 or 30 teams. Yeah. So you can come out there and taste jambalaya and uh, uh -huh. get a good meal and, and check out all the arts and crafts. You know, well, I this think is going to air where people will be seeing this after the fact, but even if they miss this one, every weekend. Every weekend there's something things. going on. Yes, Last weekend was, um, which band did you have? Uh, last weekend was Nickel, Nickel Beer. Nickel Beer. Yes. And uh, his assistant, I shouldn't even say her name, Amanda. Amanda. I don't, I don't want her to be manager. stolen from you, but she... <laughs> she does a great job. She does she, a wonderful job. She does a wonderful Booking job for us. these acts a yes. year ahead. And, um, I was, I was just shocked at the number of people. And what I really was interested in was, I assumed most of the people coming were from out of state. And she was telling me that actually mm. from within Louisiana, people know about this. Within and a 50 they, mile radius. Yeah, 80 this is of a our, staycation, our customers. Yes. which we is great. Yes, yes, yes. Well, you know, we felt we put out a good product, mm -hmm. so, you know, and they keep coming back, you know, we keep trying to make it better for them every time yeah. they do, you know. We put a lot of money back into the place, so uh, they keep coming back, mm -hmm. you know. it's. A, yeah. Good deal. So you've got now 200 acres out there, Lee. Yes. For, for uh, recently, growth. over the last couple of years, I purchased 200 more acres, mm -hmm. and that's going to give more. us an opportunity to expand mm -hmm. Cajun Palms. Uh, uh, and then we're also expanding. Uh, you may have heard we've opened up a couple of years ago. We opened up a place called Prehistoric Park, mm -hmm. which has been a big hit. I saw the dinosaurs yes, out there. They're yes, huge. Yes. It's about a six, seven acre track of land, heavily mm -hmm. wooded. And there's a concrete sidewalk that mazes through there. Mm -hmm. And you walk down there and you uh, come up on these life size dinosaurs with an educational plaque telling you the name and a little mm -hmm. bit of history about each dinosaur. And uh, it, it became, it's, it's very educational for our school systems. And they uh, come visit, right? Oh, God, the yes. They've, they've embraced it quite a bit. During the school week. Uh, they come. Last May, we've had, in just the month of May, we had 51 schools visit our. Our, our place from so, around the state from around the state wow yes I've seen him I've heard him come as far as Alexandria Lake Charles uh -huh. uh, I think a couple from New Orleans have, have come that's a great trip too yes to it, is, it is we, they make a day out of it it's uh -huh. educational uh, we have uh, concessions and we have playgrounds so it's a very fun mm -hmm. trip for them to take you know good little break away from school yeah and then right next door you have something opening up this week next door is our main attraction right now oh, it's it's, awesome. uh, it's been a, a project that we've been working on the last 15 months and it's coming to finally open up uh, today actually we're gonna do a soft opening this week mm -hmm. and then this Friday uh, the 17th mm -hmm. I believe March 17th yeah, yeah we'll be having our grand opening uh, which we're very excited about uh, it's a huge arcade it's 68,000 square feet mm -hmm. on the roof 
Uh, it's got indoor putt-putt, it's got laser tag, it's got spin zone, which is uh, like bumper cars. Mm -hmm. It's got an XD theater, which I think I'm pretty positive we're the only one in the state of Louisiana that has one. And uh, uh, there's also... A, and there's also the go-kart, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, we have a covered go-kart track, which kind of sets us apart from everybody else. You know, rain or shine, day mm -hmm. or night, these cars can run. So right. it's a pretty neat little deal. It looks like a great place for birthday parties and uh, family events. It is. We have birthday party rooms set up, mm -hmm. all kinds of different packages to buy. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. We have a, a great chef come in, and uh, he's done a great job with our menu, and mm -hmm. the food's going to be fabulous. So it's it's... It's so colorful. I like the cars. Like it's got a car <laughs> theme throughout. Yes, yes. It's, and it, what is the, um, the the Ford? Is it a Model A? It's a Model A, a 1929 uh -huh. Model A Ford uh -huh. uh, that I have on a, on a showcase in there. With windshield wipers. Yes, it's the first car uh -huh. Henry Ford ever had with windshield wipers. It's beautiful. Pretty pretty cool, yeah. But the seats around, when you walk around, you've got those seat looking, um, I right. mean, car looking seats. Yeah, we have these sofas that look like. Like the 50s. Exactly. The cars with the fins and uh, race cars. And yep. it's just, it's big and it's got the look of a racetrack with the black and white tiles and then right. the, the right. uh, diner looking seats yeah, yeah. and so you've got like burgers and all kinds of uh, we have an extensive menu believe it or not for, uh -huh. for a diner we're mm -hmm. uh he's done a great job uh, uh -huh. i mean they have grilled catfish platters uh uh we have all kinds of nice pool boys that he's uh, uh -huh. he's developed uh i can't say the names of them right now but uh you'll recognize some of his food that you know he's may has taken from other places uh -huh. you know and kind of it's good cajun food good cajun food yes uh -huh. ma'am yes ma'am yeah and not that I want to push drinking, but I know you do have adults. We have a little um, lounge area for the adults only. Uh -huh. That's correct. You know, if they come and they want to have a, an adult beverage, they're welcome to just go in that area. Mm -hmm. It's kind of confined and concealed off from everyone else. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, we do have that also. Yeah. Now let's. I want to kind of go back around to for people visiting your place, like the. Can people just come when you have the, the bands like Nickel Beer, or do you have to be staying on the site? I want to Actually, Cajun about. Palms is a private mm -hmm. uh, business, and we allow campers and their guests only mm -hmm. during the camping seasons. But whenever there's an entertainment like a, a cook off or the arts and craft show mm -hmm. or a, a band, we can yes, drop in? Yes, we, we do allow the general public to come in. Do we pay an entry fee? Yeah, there's for a parking? small entry fee, yes, ma'am. Uh huh. And I also remember when I was touring last week, uh, you said that if the adults want to like maybe swim outside or fish and they want a, a break, you have uh, child care, you have child care set up for well, um, certain yeah, times We have of employees the year. that will watch your child, yes. Mm -hmm. We have a uh, movie. We have a and, movie theater. Uh -huh. We show Disney, kind of Disney movies throughout. Uh, we have arts and crafts that we can do for the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, quite a few. We have a train ride that we give our kids. So, lots of stuff to do for the whole family, not yeah. just the kids, the adults. Everybody's going to have fun if they come to Cajun yeah. Palms, I promise. I just wanted to get in some of this because it's it's phenomenal that all this is in one location. And all I mean, in one big package. All in one big package. Yep, yep. I know. And, and the future uh, is going to be... Off well, the chart. Lazy River. I know you're thinking about yes, that. Yes, we're uh, we're considering doing the Lazy River, which will probably break ground next year. So it's not just a probability. It's... No, ma'am, it's coming. Uh -huh. It's coming. Uh, we're going to do a Lazy River, which is going to be almost a half a mile long. <laughs> uh, it's going to have restaurants, bars, uh, a daycare center. Mm -hmm. It's going to have a lot of amusement. Uh, so people could just go for that. That yes. could be a destination. This, yes, ma'am. This business will be open to the general public, mm -hmm. just like the arcade is now and the, mm -hmm. the prehistoric park is now. Uh, this will be open to the general public as well as the people that are camping. Mm -hmm. So people don't really need to drive to Epcot and Disney World, you know? Not when we finish. I think uh -huh. they'll have a real good time right here in Cajun Land, mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. Is this what you pictured all along, Lee? Were you thinking it would grow to be this big when you I first I was hoping it would, yes. Uh -huh. I had a feeling that if you... You know, if you gave them good entertainment and uh, uh, good lodging and good food, I think they would come, and, and that's mm -hmm. kind of what I'm basing it on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell me, tell me. Um, I'm just trying to think of some things we didn't discuss because you showed us so much last week. Um, One thing I didn't say uh, on the Lazy River side, mm -hmm. uh, which is coming, we're also going to contract uh, 390 condos around the Lazy River and in that perimeter area. Okay. And we're actually going to lease most of them, but we will be selling some. 
So you can actually own a condo in Raging River. And live there. And live there if you As a resident yes. and not just like yes. a uh, rental type right. of situation. So, so when do you think that'll be next year also or will you do the Lazy River We're going to break ground on the condos and the Lazy River at the same time, yes. Uh -huh. Yes. So, so your so banker must be excited about the Banker is excited, yes. Uh -huh. he, you know, I used to borrow uh, thousands of dollars from the, my bank and uh, I couldn't sleep at night. Mm -hmm. Now uh, I'm born millions of dollars. Now he can't sleep at night. <laughs> and Just, a probably... joke. Just a joke. <laughs> and he'll probably know who you're talking about. Oh yeah, he'll yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, this is. Um... I remember when I was involved with you in the early days, and uh, I just had no idea that it was going to be this big. Yeah, it, it was. A, it's been a good ride. We're very blessed. Is I there think. any other place like this in Louisiana? No, I don't think so. Um, there's a couple campgrounds now that are going up and, and mm -hmm. just opened, uh, and you know they're trying to trademark some of the things that mm -hmm. we do. Uh, and uh, I'm hoping it's working out for them because right. I think there's enough to go around for everybody. Right. You know? Right. But the total package, when we're completed and have developed the whole 200 acres, I can guarantee there won't be anything around it mm -hmm. like this. And it's going to spur other development in that area. We're hoping, yes. Because yes. right now you're next to um, Crawfish Town. We're next right? door to Crawfish Town. The great neighbor, great know. friend, Johnny A. Bear, has done a great job at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a perk from our customers because they can come in on a weekend and set up on Friday night and not have to worry about cooking mm -hmm. and go right over to the restaurant and, and get a great meal out of it. They can eat there and then eat uh, at your place. Right. During right. the day, so right, yeah. Any other things on the horizon, or you've pretty much focused on uh, Cajun Palms? Well, uh, but right now, Cajun Palms is, mm -hmm. is, is my baby, so because you're still uh, so young, you've got uh, probably oh, yeah, some more projects than you. I haven't reached my prime yet. I'm mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so funny. No, we're going to, uh, I enjoy what I do. Mm -hmm. I've always been a builder, a creator, I, I love creating and, and building. and uh, designing things, so mm -hmm. I don't think I'll ever stop doing that, you know. Uh, I may pass a baton to my children or someone else, but some uh, uh, I'll always be involved. Do you have any advice for a young person that is listening to you and, and thinks, I wonder if I could do that, you know? Yeah, I guess uh, uh, you got to be totally committed. Uh, you got to be willing to give, mm -hmm. you know as well as receive. Uh, it's about providing a good service. Exactly, exactly. Um, it's a 24-7, example, the campgrounds are 24-7. Yeah. And we knew least. that going into uh -huh. it, but didn't realize the intensity. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's you're there 24-7 and... Uh, you were it, busy as soon as it opened? Did you quite a bit, yes. Uh -huh. It didn't take very long for us uh -huh. to get real busy. And uh, so, if you didn't enjoy it, you would have probably gotten out of that, right? If, if right. it wasn't something that exactly, yes, so I your, enjoy it. Your advice is to uh, is to commit yourself totally and and, and give it one hundred and ten percent, and surround yourself with good people. And you have, like I have. Yes, yeah, you really have. I really have. You can trust from Amanda to Perry to everybody who's on my staff right mm -hmm. now. Just a great, great uh, bunch of people to work with. Mm -hmm. I'm really honored that you took time today to join us on the I'm show. I'm honored that you invited me. I oh, appreciate look. the invite. Upper Lafayette is all about promoting the northern part of our parish and the surrounding areas, which you're, you're right outside of our right, uh, parish right. lines. But yep. it's about the opportunities available as a great place to live, work, and invest. And you've taken your education at Northside, and you've you've built a big business, and um, you've you've bettered our lives. So I want to thank you for for all you've done. Thank you very much. Appreciate and for it. your friendship. Yes, so, ma'am. Same here. I want to thank you also for joining us. Uh, we enjoy producing Upper Lafayette on the Move. I want to thank Delta Media here in Karen Crow, Dylan Gillery, and and all the staff here at Delta Media for making this show possible. On behalf of Upper Lafayette Economic Development Foundation, I'm Jan Swift with another episode of Upper Lafayette on the Move. Thank you.